Welcome back to another OrcadX Capture How-To video. In this tutorial, we'll walk through how to set up and design design rule checks, electrical rule checks, and physical rule checks on a schematic design. To ensure a schematic is error-free, designers must verify that all functional components are correctly placed and fully connected. OrcadX Capture includes the design rule check feature that helps identify common issues like unconnected pins, floating nets, and more. These checks can be run on demand or in real time to catch potential design violations early. The available rules cover basic electrical, physical, and simulation-based checks. Additionally, users can create custom rules to tailor the DRC process to their specific design requirements. First, let's take a look at online DRC. Online DRC runs in real time, instantly detecting and displaying errors and violations as the user creates or modifies the design. Here, we have a partially completed design open in OrcadX Capture. We'll complete the schematic by adding a few components and a bus. As we build the schematic, notice how the Online DRC tab continuously updates with warnings and errors helping us catch issues as they arise. In the DRC tab, users can double-click a row to cross-probe and highlight objects with violations. For example, the recently drawn bus doesn't have a name assigned. Once we connect it to the main bus, the violation is resolved and the DRC error is cleared. Similarly, we see two other warnings one for a connector, and another for diode D1. The connector is missing a footprint while the diode's associated P-SPICE model isn't found in the configured library. To fix these issues, we'll replace the components with suitable alternatives. Once updated, these DRC errors will also be cleared. Now, let's look at batch DRC. Unlike online DRC, batch DRC needs to be run manually. To do this, we'll open the DRC dialog, where we can also turn online DRC on or off. For batch DRC, there are a few key options. DRC action defines the scope of the check. You can run it on the entire design or just on a selected schematic folder. Mode chooses between instances or occurrences, depending on whether your design is flat or hierarchical. Create DRC markers decides if warnings and errors should be marked in the schematic. And Wave DRC lets you exclude previously waived errors from showing up again. Show DRC output controls where the results are displayed. We'll select the DRC window here. And Report Path specifies where the DRC report will be saved, with an option to change the location. Now, under Rule Setup, you can pick which rules to include, electrical, physical, simulation-based, or custom rules. Just check the box to enable a rule for batch or online DRC. If you're using custom rules, you'll find them under the Custom Rules tab. For example, we've added a rule to check the voltage across a capacitor. Moving on to the report setup, this tab lets you include extra details in the generated DRC report. Then there's the ERC matrix. This is used to check connections between pins hierarchical blocks, and ports. The table lists these components, and at each intersection, you'll either see a W for a warning, an E for an error, or a blank space, meaning the connection is valid. You can click through these options to change the setting as needed. Finally, in the Exception Setup tab, you can click Add New to specify any DRC warnings you want to ignore in future checks. Once the rules are set, click Apply and then Run. The batch DRC will process, and once it's complete, 
The results will appear in the DRC tab. Additionally, a DRC report file is generated under the Outputs folder. To open it, simply double-click the report in the Project Manager tree. From the DRC window, the user can sort the results and double-click to cross-probe to a specific object. In the first entry, we see a pin type conflict where the output pin is connected to a power pin. According to the ERC matrix, this is flagged as an error. This connectivity issue is also highlighted by two other DRCs, both pointing to the same connection. To fix it, we'll remove the short and clear these DRCs. Next, we see a custom DRC error, indicating that the voltage drop across a bypass capacitor exceeds its rated voltage. To fix this, we'll replace it with a higher voltage rated capacitor. If a reported DRC is due to an intentional or valid connection, it can be waived. For example, in this design, the alias named AGND and ZeroNet are expected to be the same, so this DRC can be waived. To do that, select the DRC marker, right-click, and choose Waive DRC. Now, let's fix the remaining errors. We'll connect any unconnected pins and hanging nets to resolve those DRCs. The error for OUT11 and OUT111 is caused by incorrect bus bit definitions. We'll fix this by removing the extra bit from the bus. Once all these changes are made, save the design and rerun the batch DRC. After the recheck, the fixed violations will no longer appear and any waived DRCs will be marked as waived. On the schematic, there are no DRC markers and the DRC report no longer shows any errors or warnings. That wraps up this video. Thanks for watching.